Alright, so what I'm going to do for this video is I'm just going to run through all three of the fights on today's Showtime card. Or last night's Showtime card now as it stands. Uh, Arislandi Lara versus Vanas Rosian. Jamal Charlo versus Austin Trout. And Jamel Charlo versus uh, John Jackson. Um, so, I'll start with uh, from the bottom up. Jamel Charlo versus John Jackson. Um, I thought John Jackson was exposing Jamel to a certain degree. It seemed like Jamel was having a lot of trouble cutting off the ring. Um, off of a guy that was being the mobile guy as opposed to where Jermell is normally the mobile guy. Normally it's him that's doing the stick and move routine on an opponent. But with uh, Jackson, Jackson was doing a very good job sticking and moving. He was switching stances. He was pot shotting him and you know hitting him with um, combinations as well. Um, good counter shots. He would he would stop. He would hit him. Then he'd immediately like get back into to moving around and setting up another shot. Um, you know, stop, hit him with a couple of shots, a good combo, and, you know, start moving again. And that pretty much filtered through all the way until, um, Jermil Charlo wound up knocking him out. <laughs> he caught him with a clean left hook and, um, I mean, just, uh, knocked him, like, almost sideways. Uh, it's almost like he turned his back, but the thing is, it's like he, Jackson was so, it was hit so hard and he was so hurt. That it's almost like he didn't know which way was up. And uh, I mean he just the follow up. Uh, Charlo hit him with another hook. Or rather the, the first shot was a uh, was an overhand right. Then he hit him with a hook. And that knocked him you know even further out. And then you know the ref of course stopped it. Um, that of course was. What was that in the 7th? Uh, or in the 8th? That was in the 8th round. Yeah um, I like all three of the judges. Basically had uh, Jackson winning a near shutout. He was up, uh, let's see, six rounds to one. It would have been, yeah, six rounds to one uh, over Charlo at the time of the stoppage. Um, so Charlo managed to bail himself out. Showed that, I mean, he has the power to bail himself out even if he's being outboxed, which is pretty good. Although Jackson has had some chinny issues um, as was seen when he fought Andy Lee. Except for Andy Lee, of course, is a big puncher himself. Um, he was beating the dog shit out of Andy Lee, and then Andy Lee managed to just spark him out with one clean right hook. That That's that nasty right hook that Andy Lee has. But, I mean, either way, Charlo managed to get the job done. So, um, in spite of the fact that you can criticize him for the fact that he was losing that fight really, really obviously, um, until that point, he managed to bail himself out um, like champions are supposed to. Um, he, he managed to pull it off. So, Charlo got through with that one. Then we had uh, Jamal Charlo defending his IBF belt versus um, versus uh, Austin Trout. Austin Trout uh, had, did a, a fair job in the in the fight throughout the fight. Although Jamal seemed to control the pace for the most part, um, especially in the first half of the fight, the fight really didn't get tight. I thought until the latter half, where it seemed like Jamal was kind of running out of ideas in in how to track down Austin Trout, whereas Austin Trout started to get a little bit more lively. Um, the way it started out was Jamal's power, his reach, and his height was giving him a significant advantage over Trout, and Trout really didn't know quite how to deal with it, because whereas Trout's normally like kind of a stick-and-move pot-shotting type of fighter, um, he was having to sell out to a certain degree in order to negate the height and reach of Jamal, whereas Jamal pretty much could hit Trout at any distance, even when Trout was out of range of landing his own punches. So Jamal had a significant advantage with regard to that. Um, his hand speed was uh, was quite about equal to him as well in terms of getting that first shot off, that reflexive first shot. But Trout was able to show off with some pretty good combinations, and um, he especially so in the latter half of the fight where he got on his toes a little bit, started moving around a little bit more, setting things up in a little bit of a different way. And he landed some pretty good combinations. The only thing is, even in some of those close rounds, uh, Jamal was still landing the cleaner, heavier punches. Um, and so, in the end, the I didn't think that Trout had really done enough to beat Jamal. I thought he had made it; he'd done enough to make it make it close. But I still wound up having Jamal win in the fight, seven rounds to five. Judges, of course, saw it similarly, and so. Jamal came through with a victory. I mean, not the most exciting, um, great victory, although probably a little bit of a better one in general than what Jamal was able to pull off, considering the fact that Jamal 
didn't look like he was in as much of danger of losing the fight the way that Jermell was, in spite of the fact that he didn't, you know, clean Trout's clock the way that Jermell was able to do to John Jackson. Yeah, but, of course, uh, Trout is a higher caliber fighter just in general. Then, finally, we had Arslandi Lara versus Vanas Matarosian. Um, with this fight, I thought Vanas actually got off to a better start than Lara. A better start than in their first fight as well. Uh, Vanas started off um, throwing pretty good combinations, cutting off the ring really well, throwing good shots to the body. It wasn't until about the fourth round and the fifth round where I thought Lara to start, started really getting his groove and started to find a home for that left hand as well as being able to do a little bit of a stick and move and being able to negate some of what Vanas was able to use to cut off the ring. Because the re thing with Vanas is he'll throw punches, but he'll kind of stay static right after he throws the punch. And actually, Lara does it too. The, both of them kind of do the same thing. They'll throw a punch, but they'll stay static after they throw the punch. Or they'll throw the punch and then they'll, you know, move away after they throw the punch, even if they miss. Um, whereas a lot of other fighters that are more on the craftier side on the inside, like an Angulo or a, a Molina, for instance, when they were able to fight Lara, and the reason why they gave him trouble is because they would hit Lara and then they would get, they would lean into him after they hit him so that they'd be able to set up for the next shot after the fact. Even if Lara was trying to escape, they'd still be able to at least land so, somewhat of a grazing shot. And with Molina in particular, he would hit Lara, um, almost like clinch him or smother into him so that Lara really couldn't retaliate, then back up again or break his own clinch and then hit Lara again. Vanas didn't do anything, any of that. He, even if whether he would hit Lara or not, after he would throw his first shot, it's almost like he would just linger in there, kind of looking to set up the second shot, but not just throwing it in, in a clean combination, and either enabling Lara to counter him or enabling Lara to escape. And then you know it would be a whole new setup where Lara would be able to probably plant his feet and hit Vanas with another shot before Vanas would be able to plant his own feet and enable to get um, either a single shot or a combination. So Lara started to get off in the mid rounds a little bit more and then they started to kind of trade rounds back and forth up until probably about the ninth where I thought Lara kind of uh, controlled the championship rounds more so than Vanas was able to. So in the end with that fight I wound up having it uh, seven rounds to five in rounds and then of course um, Lara got an extra point due to the or uh, Vanas got a point deducted so that was an extra point in terms of the differential and how they won. So I had it 115 to 112, similar to one of the judges. And I believe the other two had it 116 to 111, if I remember correctly. But um, pretty solid win for Lara. Um, managed to clean up that draw that he had with Vanas Monterosian. And, I mean, uh, it's looking like, I mean, well, or hopefully anyway, um, both of the Charlos and Lara will manage to get uh, another big fight. I know that uh, Charles Hatley wound up attacking Jamal after his fight in spite of the fact that he's supposed to be the mandatory for Jamal. So I thought it was kind of weird that he attacked Jamal in instead of like pushing Jamal after that that fight. I mean, that was a pretty weird situation. I guess he just couldn't tell the twins apart, funny enough. Because that's one of the big criticisms that people can't even tell the twins apart. Like, fans can't tell the twins apart. And, like, even the fighters that are trying to fight them and, like, become their rivals and their top contenders uh, apparently can't do, do it either. It was pretty pretty funny. And, like, I guess Don King was there, too, because I guess uh, Don King promotes Hatley. And uh, apparently Don King couldn't tell them apart either because he pretty much sent Hadley in there to, you know, start some shit. So, I mean, that's, that's, that is what it is, I guess. And then, um, but Jamal should actually uh, be taking on uh, Julian J. Rock Williams. So, I mean, it'll be interesting to see if that pops off. Uh, Trout uh, hasn't been too happy about some of the shit that Williams has been saying on Twitter. So, he told Charlo specifically to go smack him up for him. So, I think that's a solid fight right there. Jamal versus Julian Williams. I think that's a that'll be an exciting fight. Um, two boxer punchers, you know. Two guys that really like to put authority on their shots. And uh, I think that'll be a very interesting fight. Um, with Lara, he doesn't quite seem to have the same kind of uh, opponent opportunity quite yet. Probably not until the potential winner of a Demetrius Andre versus um, a Willie Nelson fight. Uh, the, I think the winner of that fight will probably be the, the top contender for Lara coming up. Um, that's a very interesting fight too. I think either of those guys 
give Laura an excellent fight. I've been calling for the Andre fight for a minute. I've been really wanting to see Andre versus Laura, um, especially considering uh, they both have the common opponent in Vanos Motorosian. And, uh, I mean, even more so now. Uh, but Willie Nelson is a very, very tough fighter. Um, just, you know, big, awkward, you know, just he's almost like a blown-up version of, like, a Diego Corrales or, you know, just just a, a, a huge guy that doesn't even necessarily use his height and reach to his advantage in terms of keeping distance. He uses his height and reach to his advantage in terms of getting leverage, and getting leverage on every shot, using every bit of just his overall ability to sit down on a shot and just like just load up on it you know a lot of people underestimate um leverage of a taller fighter being able to punch at a target you know just a little bit lower than him and not really having to reach out for them um so that that's that'll be an interesting fight right there and hopefully the winner versus laura um i think that's that's just an excellent fight altogether you know we'll probably see some things out of um, all of those fighters that we haven't necessarily seen in past fights of theirs because, you know, they, they have to step it up in order to defeat fellow elite competitors. So, uh, a pretty good night of fights um, from on the Showtime side of things. Got a couple other things to attend to with regards to fights that have happened today. So, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.